Hello, welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 27, Properties in C Sharp. In this session, we will be looking at read-write, read-only and write-only properties. We will also be looking at auto-implemented properties which are introduced in C Sharp 3.0. In the previous session, we have seen how to protect class fields using public getter and setter methods. In this session, we will do the same thing using properties. If you haven't watched my video session on why properties are required, I would strongly encourage you to do so before continuing with the session because we will be using examples from our previous session. So let's look at that example. In the previous session, we have designed a student class with three private fields and to protect and encapsulate these fields we have used the respective public get and set methods okay for example to read and write this private field id we are making use of set id and get id methods okay so now how do we do that using properties in c sharp okay to do that there is a slight modification that we have to do we know that id field is actually an integer so public int and you don't have to have a parameter passed in and what you need to have instead is a get and set accessor since this is set we're going to call this set and a get accessor so what is the get accessor going to do? It is simply going to return the ID. So this underscore ID. And look at this. So public and instead of calling it as set ID, we'll call it as if, you know, ID. So the property name is ID. And we are saying, okay, if somebody sets the value, let's say, for example, how do they set it? Something like c1 dot id look at that it's appearing as if it's a field id let's say if somebody sets it to 101 now what's going to happen this 101 gets passed into this property and the set accessor will be called because we are setting the value and then how will it be checked there is a built-in keyword called value okay so this value will contain 101 which are which we are assigning to this property so this 101 actually gets passed into this keyword so if 101 is 101 less than or equal to 0 that's false so it comes here and this dot id equal to again value so this is what is the disconnect that you have to understand the value keyword is the one which will receive the value that we set to this property okay so in this example we are setting the id to 101 so this 101 value gets passed into this keyword okay so we use that if somebody passes 500 that gets passed again to this and since we are setting the value the set accessor gets invoked and similarly, if somebody is trying to print the value, how 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 they would do that? Console dot write line c1 dot. You don't have to use get id anymore. C1 dot id. So now the C sharp will automatically understand that okay, somebody is trying to pull the value out of this property. So what happens is it invokes this id property, and somebody is trying to read the value. So it invokes the get accessor of this property and returns the value which is there in that private field so pretty simple right and the advantage of using this property is look at this it's not like a method you use the properties as if they are fields but on the other hand when we had set id we had to call it like a method so there's no need to make use of the set id or get id methods anymore instead we use this property public entity and the same is the case we do for name okay so what we do since name is of type string so public string and give it a meaningful name maybe name is the property 
and we get rid of that parameter and a property will have a set and a get accessor so set accessor and a get accessor so what will the get accessor do it will simply return the value that is present in the field now it doesn't simply return that it has to do this check so what we can do in the get accessor will have this logic if you remember this is the ternary operator we are checking okay if this dot name is null or empty then return no name else return whatever is there in that name field okay so we can get rid of this get name now so what we are doing is we are getting rid of the getter and setter methods which were which we introduced and we are using properties instead okay so now we have to make use of that value keyword because that's what receives the value which people set to this property all right so that's about name and then this is interesting now look at this this name property it has got both set and get accessors meaning this is a read write property somebody can assign a value to this property which in turn will assign that value to the field and somebody can read the value from this property so it's a read write property if it has got both get and set accessors it's a read write property but if you remember from our previous example we wanted the pass mark field to be a read only field okay so if you want a field to be read only you want your property also to be read only so what you do you only have the get accessor you will not have the set accessor so in that case it becomes a read only field okay so how do i do that again get pass mark instead of that we will just say pass mark and we don't have to have that parenthesis because this is a property and all we will have is a get accessor that's it and we return that so now what we have done in this example is we replaced all the getter and setter methods with properties with get and set accessors and if you look at this example we have two read write properties name and id or read write properties because they have got get and set accessors whereas pass mark is a read only property because it has got only the get accessor okay so let's go ahead and see how to use that so we don't have to have set name anymore instead c1 dot name is equal to maybe mark and pass mark i i sh i will not be able to set look at that if i try to set pass mark to maybe 35 or 34 whatever look at this i get a compilation error immediately and if you hover the mouse over that you see property student that pass mark cannot be assigned to it is read only because why when we try to assign a value pass mark property right click on that and when you say go to definition look at this property it has got only the get accessor it doesn't have the set accessor so you can't set a value to that you can only read value from that field so that's why this is a read only field so very simple to make a property read only just have the get accessor remove the set accessor that makes it read only and similarly if you want to make a property write only then you knock off the get accessor and have only the set accessor that makes it write only you can only you know write a value or set a value but you cannot read value from that property so that's that so now if I want to go ahead and print that look at that get name is like a method we don't have to rely on getter and setter methods anymore instead we use the properties and look at this properties I use them as if they are fields and similarly if I want to use the pass mark dot pass mark and look at this now I don't get a compiler error because um, the runtime is is, is good enough to understand okay somebody is trying to read a value now because it doesn't have an equal to here it has an equal to it means we are trying to set a value so I think it makes you know that decision based on that and it's 
trying to read the pass mark value here and since the pass mark property has a get accessor it will be able to do that so when we go ahead and run that the program works exactly the same except that we're using c sharp properties instead of the getter and setter methods okay so if we go back to the slides in c sharp to encapsulate and protect fields we use properties instead of the getter and setter methods we use get and set accessors to implement properties. A property with both get and set accessor is a read write property. A property with only get accessor is a read only. And a property with only a write uh, with a set accessor is a write only property. And the advantage of using properties over traditional get and set methods is that you can access them as if they were public fields. And another important concept that got introduced in C-Sharp 3.0 is auto-implemented properties. Because many a times, you know, you may not have any logic like this. For example, here we are validating the name field. And here we are validating, you know, the student ID should not be negative. But many a times, let's say, for example, um, maybe I have private string maybe underscore city where the customer is living and maybe private string underscore email etc now if i have to implement properties for this then i have to type public string and maybe city and then a get accessor get return this dot underscore city and similarly we need to have the set accessor which will set you know maybe this dot underscore city is equal to value okay and if i have to implement the email then i have to do public um since that is also a string public string email and then we need to have a get and a set accessor in the get accessor we will say return this dot underscore email and in the set accessor we will say this dot underscore email is equal to value so i mean for any properties that hasn't got any logic in the get or set accessor you know this is a lot of code and in reality you know the objects are huge you know they will have city state gender etc and most of them could be optional and we don't have to have any kind of validation happening uh, so in those cases this is a lot of code which we have to write so that's why what they have done is in c sharp 3.0 they have actually implemented auto implemented properties okay let's look at an example of how to do that so so for the city private field and for this email private field if we have to convert them to properties i need to have you know these many lines of code but what we can do with auto implemented properties is you don't have to have two private fields and then implement the properties simply what you can do you can get rid of those two fields and obviously when you get rid of them you get this warnings and then what you can do is you can get rid of all this implementation and you can simply say get and set similarly get and set so what's going to happen behind the scenes is that you know the compiler will create for us automatically a private field and then this property will be used to read and write to that pro that private field okay so if you have you know 50 properties which doesn't have any logic within them with the get and set accessors you can make use of the auto implemented properties which will reduce the amount of code that you have to write and for auto implemented properties the compiler will automatically create the backing private fields for us okay so if you want to get the size even reduced you can actually format that you know something like that get and everything comes uh you know in one line
anyway so just like that you can format this as well so it's just one line so if there is no additional logic in the property accessors, then we can make use of auto-implemented properties introduced in C Sharp 3.0. Auto-implemented properties reduce the amount of code that we have to write. When you use auto-implemented properties, the compiler will create a private anonymous field that can only be accessed through properties get and set accessors. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.